up y'all welcome back to the channel and welcome to the final video in the year-end series I got my holiday sweater on because that's the mindset I'm going into after filming this it's like you know time to get cozy for the holidays in today's video we're looking at the best country songs of 2022 that weren't really big hits so in the last songs video I did it was all hit songs that had to come off billboards hot country songs year-end chart and this is everything else. It can either be a single that wasn't a huge hit, or it can just be a random one-off release, or deep cuts that were on albums, just all the other songs. Because that is not a very limiting category, and this comprises like 99.9% .9 of all songs, this list is definitely the most subjective and most just reflective of my own personal taste. Because obviously I haven't heard everything, and there certainly will be some overlaps with my favorite albums and favorite songs and so if you don't like my personal taste you probably won't like this list but if you do like the songs that you hear in this video they're linked in the description as is my spotify playlist where i'm always adding stuff as i find it and like it same rules as all my other videos the most pertinent one here is that an artist can only have one entry on this list so you know i'm just trying to spread the love and like i said there's so much music that i don't really stress too much about the ranking and everything here these are just the 20 songs that kind of impacted me the most they caused a reaction when i heard them for the first time at number 20 caitlin butts with bored if i don't if i had to describe caitlin butts's style in a word it would be wry and that's totally what this song is. It's the most lackadaisical cheating song you've ever heard. In very plain but pleasant language, she tells the story of a girl that got married too young and regrets it, and she knows she shouldn't be cheating on this man who's very honest, but she's also not going to admit it. She says, I'm damned if I do, but I'm bored if I don't. So it's kind of this song that is resigned to keep cheating. There's something very country and very Southern about that. Like it's very polite in its dishonesty. And the way Caitlin delivers it is just super humorous. And number 19, Kane Brown's Whiskey Sour. So now I take my whiskey sour and bar. Kane Brown's album Different Man was one of the more exciting new releases of the year, I thought. I know most people have already written off Kane Brown in their head, but compared to a lot of pop country records, I felt like it had way more country elements than most that you hear, and it was at least fresh and exciting. One of the things that makes it super exciting is a ton of fiddle, and that is very prominent on this beautiful ballad, Whiskey Sour. This is just a sad sack song with Kane crying into his whiskey sour and feeling a little bit sour too that this girl left him. What a gorgeous song. And number 18 was Randall King's You in a Honky Tonk. You see you in a honky tonk. This song just has such a classic, beautiful vibe. I'm not the first person to compare Randall King to George Strait, and you totally hear why on a song like this. The way this song mixes the lush and like swelling sound of steel guitar with Randall King's beautiful tone. I mean, he's just got such a good deep voice and it just sounds all very romantic. It's a great song. At number 17, I'm saying Carrie Underwood's Pink Champagne. I thought Carrie Underwood's Denim and Rhinestones album was kind of messy, but if there's one song that really pulls off the 80s aesthetic that the album is going for successfully, I would say it's Pink Champagne. True to the title, I think it's fizzy, flirty, I think it is just incredibly catchy. I found this stuck in my head a surprising amount. But yeah, at a time when I'm not the biggest fan of some of Carrie Underwood's career choices, I think this song is a jam. After Carrie Underwood is done with Hate My Heart, they should maybe consider this as a single. Or I'm crazy. Number 16 is Brandon Ratcliffe's Tale of Two Towns. Did my parents settle when they settled? This song is sort of a cosmic cousin of Casey Musgrave's Merry Go Round. It is about growing up in small town America, although maybe he's got a touch more kind of gratitude for it than you heard on Merry Go Round, which is a bit more cynical. There's all sorts of clever lines here. He talks about how people grew up going from blue jerseys straight to blue collars. He asks some uncomfortable questions. You know, did my parents settle when they settled down? But ultimately he's got love and maybe a bit of bitterness towards his upbringing there. He says, Thank God I grew up there. Thank God I got out. I mostly find this song really thought provoking. It doesn't tie anything up neatly with a bow. It's about the complexity he feels about where he's from. And I just think it's kind of got a lovely folksy vibe. At number 15 is Ben Burgess with Started a Band. Ben Burgess's whole album was a big surprise to me. It was way better written and way more interestingly produced than 
I guess I was expecting from him. And Started a Band is a good example of the type of creativity that made that album stand out. This song tells a whole story of him bringing a girl to a concert and getting backstage passes, but then she leaves with the lead singer of the band, which leads him on a quest to start his own band. But then it becomes a tale about how he grew into a successful musician and like, it's a little bit shady, a little bit revengeful, but then also a little bit inspiring as he proves himself. The second verse, he's playing in front of 15 people. Uh, in the final verse, he's opening for Morgan Wallen. It's a breakup song and kind of a career autobiography song all at the same time. And it rocks. It's long. It's epic. You get these cool guitar solos. I just think it's such an impressive, cool song. Number 14 is Glory Days by Rachel McIntyre Smith. In the sun didn't fade away. I've mentioned Rachel a few times here on the channel. She hails from North Carolina. She sent me some of her music and I was blown away by this one song, Glory Days. It sounds ethereal and dreamy and yet it's so melancholy. And that sound is perfect for a song about foggy memories. She's thinking about her time in high school and why she keeps going back there mentally. She says, I romanticize a life that I couldn't wait to leave. And she wonders why she's trapped in the glory days. What a pretty song. The vocal on it's amazing. I respect the hustle that she has. And, you know, she's made a little video for it. And, I mean, I can't always listen to everything people send me. But sometimes I just hear one and it catches me off guard. And I go ham on that song. And that was certainly the case with glory days. Let's stay in the sad high school vibes for number 13. And that is Ingrid Andrus's yearbook. And I guess they stay together just because they this is one of the best written songs of the year. It's got that classic country writing to it as Ingrid Andrus thinks about the unhappy marriage that her parents were in. And as she traces back through their history and thinks about how they grew up together and all these kind of various snapshots of their life, whether it was buying a car or getting married or whatever else, she says the last time they were on the same page was in the yearbook. And I love the way that the literal book is just used as a vehicle to tell this whole story. It's such a well-conceived song, beautifully delivered, and I would say the country of song and also the standout of Ingrid Andrus's album. At number 12 is Muscadine Bloodline with Me On You. If you can't tell from my list, I often like these sort of somber reflective songs, but Sometimes you just need to rock out. And I would say that that opening guitar lick of this Muscadine Bloodline song is one of the musical moments of the year. It just gets you hyped as soon as you hear it. And when you mix in that sort of girl, I hope your daddy doesn't own a gun line that Charlie sings, it just makes the whole song just spark. The whole song just rocks. The super fast lyrics, getting to say jambalaya in a song is always fun. It made me so happy to watch this song become an organic smash because they are independent artists and, you know, we love to see it. Another fun one at number 11 is Emily Ann Roberts and Whole Lot of Little. We ain't got a whole lot, but we got a lot of little, little, little suits me just fine. Now we're getting into the part of the list where it's songs that the first time I heard them, I probably pulled over on the side of the road and made an Instagram post about it because I loved them so much. And this was one of those songs when I heard Whole lot of Little on TikTok the first time and there was this pretty blonde girl and she was singing along with a fiddle player and playing this kind of clappy beat and all these words that were like, we don't got a whole lot, but we got a lot of little and a little just suits me just fine. It's a tongue twister. Man, I felt transported back to the 90s in the best way. And then when she actually dropped the official version of the song, it kept all of that spunk and spirit and just sort of dancey jig vibes about it. This is not the most complex song in the world. It is sweet. It's about having gratitude for your relationship and for the place that you are in life. It makes you want to get up and move. And most importantly, it showcases the fiddle and is yet more evidence that fiddle is back in a big way. But mostly, yeah, it's just freaking catchy. And number 10 is Hardy's The Mockingbird and The Crow. That makes me the crow. This is another one that made me stop my car and talk about it as soon as I heard it. This is sort of an artistic statement for Hardy where he's talking about the two sides of himself, the country side of himself and the rock irreverent side of himself. And he compares himself sort of cosmically to a mockingbird and to a crow. This one is Southern, 
says things that are familiar that you've maybe heard a few times and that kind of makes you feel comfortable. This one is loud and obnoxious and brooding and, you know, maybe an emblem of death. And the way that the song switches up, there's this kind of Billie Eilish happier than ever switch up through this song. It's just so cool and it's just so honest and it's just so different. And it's just yet another piece of evidence that Hardy is way more than meets the eye because even still today, you hear a lot of people that are like, oh, that's the guy that sings the Rednecker song. I can't take him seriously. And you know what? They're losing out. But those are enough high energy songs for a minute. This is my list after all. And let's talk about my number nine song, which is Wrist Tattoo by Tucker Nicell. Dreaming's just a thing that I do. This is another one that just kind of appeared on my doorstep. It was DM to me and wow, I love this song. This song is so simple and gentle and sweet and it's delivered in the same manner by this guy Tucker Nicell. And it's just him dreaming about settling down, wanting to paint the picket fence and the mailbox and wanting this girl to get his name in her wrist tattoo. He has this winsome and poetic style when he says lines like, I've never been so scared that I was really gonna stay. It's a song about maybe young adulthood and the fear of commitment, but also the sweetness of young romance. I just love it. At number eight, I have Ernest with Tennessee Queen. Good God Almighty, we got it good, got it this was my most played song from Ernest's album, Flower Shops, and I think it's because of the steel. Paul Franklin is playing steel on the song, and it just moves so much and makes the song a total delight. But the song's also really lush, and romantic. It's kind of using all of the this Elvis imagery to sort of paint a picture of this girl as his Tennessee queen. And maybe it's like the big brother of wrist tattoo. Instead of just wanting, you know, a little fence and a little wrist tattoo, he wants a whole wraparound porch and he wants this girl to be his Tennessee queen. It's super country, it's super likable, and again, the steel. And at number seven is William Beckman with 30 Miles. And if you sing your favorite melody, Keep me in this I can tell I was in like certain moods as I was making this list because we're in the young love section of the list and sort of sweet puppy love songs. This one is a stunner. William has a crooner's voice as people have heard on songs like bourbon whiskey, but in this case, it's used a lot more in a folksy manner. And he's talking about the 30 mile drive between him and his woman's house and how he doesn't mind driving it, even if it's in the rain, if it means he gets to see her face. It's like a little storybook song and even has a long section where he just says, la da di da, and you feel like you're kind of riding on the air with him. His voice is one in a million. What a beautiful song and what a big surprise he was to me this year. Speaking of surprises, this was another one for me. At number six, Megan Maroney's Hair Salon. Well, Casey's having a baby, the high school foot. What a great way to be introduced to Megan Maroney. The song is really pretty and it's really smart. In the track, she's going to get her roots touched up and having the gossip that someone might have with their hairdresser. And the chorus is sort of a list of those things that the hairdresser's saying. Casey's having a baby, the high school football team won state. But in the midst of all of this hair salon gossip, she hears a piece of information that her ex has now gotten engaged again and he's moving on with some girl. And she's sitting there heartbroken in a hair salon. This song does everything right. It paints a very vivid image for you that sets you in a place, a love, a sense of place, and then it also surprises you. There's a twist, and you don't always get to feel that when you're listening to music. Plus, it's just delivered beautifully, and Megan's voice, that raspy voice, it's unusual. At number five is the Wilder Blue and Feelin' the Miles. God, I'm feeling This is like the most sonically different Wilder Blue song that I have heard in their catalog. And I think it actually shines because of that. It's driven by this sort of funky 80s bass line. And it's a song about being on the road and just feeling the miles, feeling exasperated about that. And yet then feeling sad again. And the way you go from these tense sections into these moments of release and the way the music goes from kind of dark and bassy into these breathy eagles-ish moments with tons of harmony it just it perfectly mimics how they're feeling and especially my favorite part is the transition between them where he says got so far to go and as that's happening you get that full modulation and then you go into the new section it's just so cool musically one of my very 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 favorite songs I listened to it like a million times this year. Perfect driving song too. And number four is Zach Bryan's Heavy Eyes. I recall what she said that she wanted me dead. It was hard for me to choose what Zach Bryan song was going to go on this list, given my rule that you can only have 
one song by an artist in the list because the other big contenders for me were Younger Years, which I loved off American Heartbreak, as well as If She Wants a Cowboy because I like what that song stands for and it's funny and the whole kind of roast of Nashville with the autotune section at the end is just epic. But ultimately, I went with Heavy Eyes because that has been the grower for me on American Heartbreak and it feels like maybe the grower for the public as well. And the song just gets me hyped. I can't deny it. The whole quick banjo part, the whole sort of vocal breakdown where he's like, I don't care who's coming with me. If you come, let's go quickly. It's so fun to shout along, even if I don't know the words perfect right here. But to me, it's also important to mention that it captures the reckless side of Zach Bryan. I hear a lot more conversation about the sort of sad, poetic side of Zach Bryan and not that raw fire and the kind of epic way he writes about youth. And this is a song about partying all night and not regretting it. He says, when I'm old, I will recall all the nights we spent outlaws. It's getting cold, but that sun is cresting and heavy eyes ain't born for resting. In other words, the sun is coming back up. So take heart and let's keep on going. And like I always say with Zach, the way he delivers it is what makes it magical. He has a growl in his lyrics. He's a master of enunciation and I feel like Heavy Eyes demonstrates that well. So there's my Zach pick for the video everybody. I know many people that watch this are like oh he would be my entire top 20 but you know we're spreading the love. Before our top three just some honorable mentions. I'm not even going to really explain them. Greener Pasture by Carter Faith is a beauty. Call Me by Luke Combs I think is the sleeper on growing up. Electrostatic by Courtney Patton is a gorgeous reflection on losing somebody. Peaked in High School by Priscilla Block is funny, petty, but real. Fortunately favors the bold by 49 winchester is funky and awesome and then i couldn't believe how much i liked the cover of four non blondes what's up by laney wilson on bell bottom country and i also really liked old country church by tyler childers but they didn't make my list and now let's go to the top three and number three is mr saturday night by john party yeah they call me mr saturday night this was the most fun you could possibly have with a heartbreak song I loved everything about this the second I heard it. It's like a doo-woppy vibe, but also a saloon vibe. You got these pianos, you got these walking guitar lines, you got fiddle all through there, and you got funny but smart, heartbroken lyrics. Everyone thinks this guy is partying the night away because he doesn't have a care in the world. They're all calling him Mr. Saturday Night, but you get a punny twist at the end of the chorus and they say, they don't know how much I missed her Saturday night. And really it's all a big facade, but the music could not be less of a facade. It is like so organic and beautiful. It's one of my favorite produced songs of the year. This song, Neon Light Speed, so many songs on his album sound amazing. My number two song of the year is called Mockingbird. It's by a little band called Low Gap. Mockingbird, Mockingbird. Low Gap is made up of two teenage brothers, Gus and Finn Johnson that live out in Ohio. And damn it, these guys sent me their song Low Gap and it is just like one of my very favorite songs of the whole year. It snuck up on me and somehow became literally my second most played song on my entire Spotify wrapped. And I swear there's something in this song that makes it addictive. I love the little mandolin part at the beginning. I love just the melody of the chorus where you're saying Mockingbird, Mockingbird. You get harmonies. You almost get a sort of bar sing-along type of sound. The singer, Gus, has a crazy voice and a crazy pronunciation of Mockingbird. And I even like that. But mostly I like what I think is a quietly very sophisticated lyric. As he asks this girl across from him if she really means the things she says or are you just repeating things that sound right? Are you just a mockingbird or do you actually love me? The guys actually dropped a whole collection of music this year and I think it shows a lot of promise. They got great taste, they know how to make good music and I hope to hear more from them in the future. I can't believe this is my number two song of the year on this list, but I mean, go back to Virginia and ask my roommates, they can attest. I was obsessed and in fact, we were all obsessed in that house with this song. So that leaves us with our number one track and I feel like anyone that follows me on social media probably knows what this is gonna be. It's Carousel by Miranda Lambert. Harlan Giovanni, what is sad to see? This song feels like a little carnival themed music box and it's twinkly nature that sort of puts you right in the setting of a traveling circus in the 80s. The song tells the story of Pretty Elena, a tightrope walker, and Harlan Giovanni, a trapeze artist, and they're tortured and ultimately not meant to be love story. Miranda says every show must end, every circus leaves town, and so the sun sets on this relationship. But you get a reveal in the final section of the song when you realize Miranda Lambert 
is pretty Elena. And she is the one pulling this sequined leotard out of her cedar chest. There's a beautiful line where she talks about her sequins and her secrets are buried in her cedar chest. Primo. Primo writing. And of course, it is from the magical trio of Miranda Lambert, Natalie Hemby, and Luke Dick. They always write great songs together. But I find this song completely haunting and completely gorgeous. And moreover, Miranda Lambert is one of the only mainstream stars, truly mainstream stars, that's like won a bunch of awards, that has something to lose that would put something as strange as Carousel on her album. And I love her for that. I love that she makes art. I could wax poetic about the song for hours, but I will save you all the trouble. I would recommend going to my Instagram. I made a whole piece of art about Carousel midway through the year, where I tried to make pretty Elena's chest of secrets. And I don't know, it just made me really want a beautiful, expensive, epic music video for this. I hope she makes one. Cause I feel like it's gonna be one of those songs that probably won't ever be a single, but I could see it having a life kind of like All Too Well has a life for Taylor Swift and kind of over the years becoming a Miranda Lambert standard. I believe in it that much. And I believe in a lot of country music. There's so much damn good country music. And I think this was a really great year. These were just the songs that stood out the most to me. And so now you've gotten my best albums, my best hit songs, my best other songs, and I hope you enjoyed. I'd love to keep hearing from you all what other stuff you just think is amazing. And um, we'll be back with all sorts of more content coming soon. Got some exciting things planned for the new year and hopefully we're gonna take it up a notch on this channel and do some things that are different and exciting. But you know, I won't get ahead of myself. Let's take it one step at a time and keep growing together. I'd love if you subscribed if you've never been here before. And um, thanks y'all for coming on this journey with me. Bye.